Welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast, where we interview experts in various fields with the goal of empowering women to make informed decisions about their health, life, and family. I'm your host, Amy Jane Smith, and I would like to thank you for tuning in today to get comfy while I introduce our next guest. Hello, and welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast. My name is Amy, and I'm your host and your guest today. So it's a little bit different to how I normally run my podcast and that is because there's nobody to interview. I thought we've had 15, 16 um, people on board so far and I wanted to tell you a bit about why I started this podcast and the whole point of the Women's Wellness Podcast. So I started my fitness career and my women's health journey five years ago and that's when I got into the fitness industry but before then when I was early teens I got my period and I had the most crippling horrible pain I had terrible skin and I felt generally awful just things were horrible every month I would be in agony um, and I couldn't go to school and if I tried walking then I would be sick actually sick Um, I would be on strongest painkillers ever until I got to about 16 so this happened probably from about 13 to 16 ish until I was 16, 17 and I went on the pill and that kind of stopped the pain. The pain kind of subsided, that was all right, I could get on with life again. My skin cleared up as well, which as a 16 year old was amazing. People wouldn't pick on me and bully me anymore. And um, yeah, I, kind of found a bit of a new me, a bit of a new Amy. I had more confidence than I could go out there and then it was just my awkward personality, really. That was my downfall. So that kind of went on until I was at uni, about year three of uni, which would have made me about 21 when I started getting pains again. And it wasn't necessarily pains, crippling pains like it was when I was younger, but it was this constant pain through, well, throughout the cycle, but getting more painful towards the end of the cycle, start of my next cycle. And it wasn't until the cats, we had a cat called Tommy, lovely little fluffy ginger thing, suckiest thing in the world, would jump on my lap and sit on my lap and if he pressed his paw in just the wrong spot, it would be, oh, oh, Tommy, just lift your paw off. Okay, breathe, thank you. And yeah, so my mum noticed that at one point because I didn't really like to bother anyone with anything. And she was like, what's going on? What What are you doing? That's that's not normal. It's like, oh yeah, it's got a bit of a pain and it hurts when the cat jumps. No, we're going to the doctors. And so we went to the doctors. I explained to the doctors. I don't remember 100% the conversation, but I do remember being then referred on for tests. Luckily, my parents had health insurance and we were covered under that. And I had an ultrasound to check for cysts and I had, um, then I, it wasn't a cyst, they couldn't see anything there. And so then they checked, they booked me to see a gynecologist and they did a exploratory laparoscopic surgery to check for endometriosis. That was their guess at the, at this time. And so I went in for that 
And again, it was paid for, so why not? And so I went in for that, and it was, yep, yeah, you've got endometriosis, that's why you've got chocolate cysts here, here, here. And then I got told afterwards that the follow up appointment was keep on taking the pill until you want to have kids. So that was the first thing that I remember. And as a young woman, 20 something, early 20s, I, I didn't really know myself. I didn't know my mind, I didn't know my body. This, this was my normal, was that periods were painful, doctors know everything, just do what you're told and shut up, basically. Um, take your pills, be happy that it's working. So I took the pills and yeah, she said, basically, when I'm older, I'll have to have a hysterectomy. And I was like, okay, okay, sure, okay, right. And so I've been taking the pill for off and on because I went to the UK and the doctor there went, no, the pill's not good for you. It's gonna make your endometriosis worse. So don't have the pill, have a marina. And I refused to have it. So I spent a little while not being on the pill. And um, that was all I knew. I knew that the pill worked for me and I liked having control over my periods. I could manipulate things how I wanted to. And yeah, it kind of, that was my knowledge of my body and how things worked. Jump ahead, so now I'm 30, I'm, um, Moved back to New Zealand, I'm getting into the fitness industry, I was 32 when I started in the fitness industry, and I was training people like everyone was the same, like everyone was like me, like everyone was big men, small men, but like men, so just work hard, push through it. If someone said they got bad periods, I was like, uh, nah, alright, yeah, maybe, maybe sit it out or maybe do a little bit of something else but yeah I was kind of like my my knowledge was what I was told by the doctor and it was the be all and end all that's what the doctor said that's what it must be and I kind of perpetuated that whole cycle that whole story of we just need to be medicalized or it's done a certain way and that's that there was no real getting to know my body and getting to know women's bodies until I um, was a couple of years into running boot camps and I just kind of started being a personal trainer. And again, I was punishing people. It was work hard and that's it. And then, then people started saying, I can't do jumping jacks because I'm gonna leak. I can't do this because I'm going to leak. I can't do sit-ups because it hurts my C-section scar. And I'm realising that people aren't all like me. People are all on different journeys. And I've got to kind of listen. I've got to... I don't know everything. And I've got to learn. I've got to figure out because this is, this is how I make my money. This is how I earn a living. This is how I put food on my table. I need to be able to help the people who are coming to me, which was 90% female, and I need to help them get the results they need and work with their body a bit better because what I'm doing right now, what then, isn't working. It's not working, I'm doing something wrong, I'm losing clients because I'm just saying, okay, we'll do this instead, do this instead, without really getting to the deep nuts and bolts of understanding why and having more of a conversation with them. So moving down the line, a year or so later, I started looking at postnatal fitness, prenatal fitness and women's health in general. And I became a holistic core restore coach. And when I first started doing that, I trialed the programs on a few people who I was already training, seeing what it was like and getting some really good feedback. And that's kind of, it opened the doorway 
to more of a conversation about different things, different um, issues that I can't necessarily help with, but that I could refer on to, or I can learn more about. And it's been a whole journey that I've only really just started to scratch the surface on. And it, I hate not knowing. I hate not knowing everything and nobody knows everything. So that is the reason why I started the Women's Wellness Podcast. And this came about, this was an idea last year when I was listening to a, another podcast, um, learning about how to run my boot camps better. So plug for John Petrohelos and Fitness Education Online. It's the boot camp blueprint. So if you are a boot camp instructor, I highly recommend that. But his whole podcast is interviewing other people and learning so much along the way whilst helping the people he wants to help. And I realized that that was the perfect way to get the knowledge in, to learn little bits and to find people who I really trust, who I know are passionate about what they do, who I know are knowledgeable about that, that area, that field, and who can serve the women who I know and who um, may just come across the podcast better. And what, I mean, through my journey, so at the moment I, um, what year was it? 2017, so it's 2020 at the moment. 2017, after 20 years, ish of being on the pill I finally stopped to try and get pregnant and now my body's going what on earth is going on I don't I've been medicalized and in yeah medicalized for so long that I don't know what I'm doing anymore wait so that's gone so now what do I do that pill's gone so what do I do now what how does it work and it's taken my body so long to figure itself out that now I'm going through IVF and I'm going to be through another process. But my goal is to empower women. So the whole name tagline of this podcast is to empower women to make informed choices and decisions about their health, about their life, about their family. And by interviewing various people in that field, hopefully it will show you that there are options out there and you don't just have to listen to the first thing that the doctor said because doctors and doctors have told me this as well that some have anyway that they are general practitioners they will refer you on to somebody else if it requires something a bit more specialist so if they don't know, if it's not their field, if they've not come across it, they might not know and they might not know who to refer to. And if it's a woman's thing, like endometriosis, then it might be that they go, oh yeah, that's just normal. Oh yeah, periods are meant to be painful. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I had one doctor tell me it was colic when I was a kid. It's colic. And yeah, it'll go pop a couple of paracetamol. But no. So the more the more people I interview, the more people who listen to this and the more people who share the podcast and the messages that come through, the more people I can help. And the more information you'll get, the more you realize that, oh wait, that sounds a bit like me. I could do with seeing that person then that is all I want to achieve. So, yeah. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's a little bit about my my why. Um, and it leads me to, to my coaching practice as well. So my whole coaching practice now is a holistic core restore coach. And my business, Connect Health, Fitness and Wellness, is to help you. So connecting you to your body, 
connecting you to how your body works, tuning in to different things, how you move, and connecting you to allied health as well to get the help that you need. Yeah, we don't have to deal with things by ourselves. What was it? Empowered women, empower women? Something like that. So yeah, if you um, want to learn anything in particular, if you have any questions, or if you are somebody in a specific field relating to women's health or business or lifestyle or anything, then please get in touch and we could maybe do an interview as well. Um, I like to share thoughts in my group, which is Pelvic Floor Tips New Zealand on Facebook. So join me there, send me a message, send me an email, info at connect health, fitness and wellness. And if you want to support this podcast, then please go to Podbean, find me on Podbean. It's the Women's Wellness Podcast and it's pink um, with a picture of my face on it. I have got a little patron account where you can donate a dollar a month and it will help me get new tools, new microphones, new gear to get the message across a bit better. So that's it. Thank you for joining me and I will see you when I interview my next guest. So bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Women's Wellness Podcast. For links and show notes, please visit www.connecthealth.fitness forward slash podcast. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we release our next episode and please share with anyone who you think might benefit. Thank you again. I look forward to